the synergy, we are very much synergistic with our human research colleagues, and, and that synergistic relationship has given us the opportunity to, uh, in one sense, exercise health and medical technical authority very much after a systems engineering model. Um, it's um, the one reinforces the other. The, the health and, uh, and, and medical care that we provide the crew, the preventive medical care that we exercise, the med air medical qualification for the crew, and taking care of them uh, on orbit and during missions uh, very much depends on the research that our, that our human research program colleagues do. Uh, by the same token, the research that the human research program executes generates a fund of knowledge that informs our practice. Uh, they, they give us both deliverables that we can use in support of crew health, and they also generate a fund of knowledge that supports our medical standards. And those are evolutionary things. They're not static. They, they change with the evidence base. So you can view it as a, uh, if you start, you can start anywhere in the circle because it really is a circular, circular concept. If you start with health standards, the standards drive human research programmatic requirements. The requirements drive the type of research that's done. The research that's done produces both deliverables to help in medical practice and care of the crew, but it also generates a knowledge base that further drives the evolution of the standards. So the one is very much dependent on the other, and we can describe this and depict it using systems engineering-like terminology which has helped to bri build bridges between us and the, uh, the engineering world of NASA. We're a very small minority. There's many, many thousands of engineers in this organization, but only a few physicians and practicing life scientists. One of the, one of the challenges that health and medical folks and life sciences folks always face in an engineering world is the, the gulf that uh, exists between uh, health and medical training and practice, and engineering training and practice. Um, there, there are many factors that go into that, but one of the most obvious differences between the two worlds, an engineer designs what the engineer wants to build, uses component parts. The component parts have very consistent part-to-part, -part, uh, well, part-to-part -part consistency. There's there's very little difference in materials between one part and another part that's manufactured to do the same thing. So the engineer designs what they want to build. They use parts of, of high reliability and consistency, and they produce the machine or the, the object of their creation. On the other hand, in health and medicine, we're presented with a functioning creation unit, evolution, whatever you want to call it, um, a human. Okay, that's been fully designed, that's been operating for many millennia. And our challenge is to understand, if you want to term the word, use the word reverse engineer, our challenge is to, is to understand the complete working unit from its component parts. So we very much have to, have had to, over the hundreds of years of modern medicine, um, try to break down the component parts and understand how the entire unit works. So it's a reverse, absolutely the reverse process that the engineers use. And we also are working with a biologic system where part-to-part -part variability is, and unit-to-unit -unit variability is great. Anatomically, during my days as a surgeon, if I did three gallbladder operations, relatively simple, no operation is simple, but relatively straightforward operation. If I did three of those on three different people in one day, I might find three different anatomic arrangements of the cystic artery that supplies blood to the gallbladder. You wouldn't find that between one fuel pump and another. Okay, so it's, it's a great challenge. And only in recent years have we been able to reverse engineer and understand um, biologic systems to the point where we're now understanding what drives them at the genetic level. So only now is the genetic code being being unraveled and understood in greater detail. So that, uh, that wide difference between engineering and medicine, uh, we've never developed a common lexicon that allows the two worlds to work together in an optimal fashion. And our, our attempts at a system, systems engineering approach to standards and requirements with our human research colleagues 
has been a step in that direction over the past decade.